spoke with some folks at the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to find out what types of data they collect, how they collect it, and how they use it. Here's what they told me. Yes, my name is Bill Swan. I'm the Director of Licensing here at the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And it's All of our customers' hunting and fishing license are, are data sets that we use, as well as all snowmobile registrations, ATV registrations, boat registrations, moose lottery applicants, any deer permit lottery applicants. We also have a number of smaller data sets, for example, registered main guides, bait dealers, taxidermists, things like that. Or we have agents throughout the state that sell our hunting and fishing licenses and all the various registrations that I mentioned. And so they do most of the data collection for us. This would be things like town offices, big retail establishments like Cabela's, Kittery Trade and Post, L.L. Bean, as well, well as a number of smaller mom and pop stores throughout the state. Another way the data collected is people are able to buy their hunting and fishing licenses online from their home. I use Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access to analyze this data. For example, every year there's a lot of different law proposals that come before the legislature and we use the data to analyze what would happen if some of those laws passed and we give that information to the legislature so they can understand the impact. In conjunction with the Department of Tourism, the department hired a consulting firm a year or so ago to do a economic impact study of hunting and fishing in the state of Maine and we needed to provide our data sets to that company in order to do an accurate analysis of that for us. The other thing that we do is we make biological decisions, for example, how many moose permits are we going to give out, how many any deer permits, what zones are we going to give them in. We okay, so I'm going to open up a, data, a table in the database right now, which is a table of all the people that applied for a moose permit last year in the fall of 2016. Okay, so say, for example, that I wanted to do find out how many people from 2016 applicants one a, uh, applied for a moose permit from the town of Portland and then I run that query and you can see it comes back with nine records okay if two people out of those nine want a permit two I'm Mary Ellen Wicket I work for Inland Fisheries and Wildlife with the research and assessment section I'm a wildlife biologist and programmer analyst well some of the data that we collect are our registered kill data. We send materials to the registration stations across the state, registration books and tags, and in, we have these stations record the registered kill for a variety of species. We also collect biological data, and these data are returned back to our data entry section. They're entered into Microsoft Access databases, provided to our species specialists for management planning, species management planning, and also sometimes the warden service uses registration data for their various investigations. Other data that we collect also include observation data and survey data that's collected by our species specialists. These include data on endangered, threatened, and special concern species. We also use citizen scientists that are members of the public that volunteer to assist the department to collect um, observation data for fish and wildlife. And we're I'm Amy Nian. I'm a wildlife biologist. I deal a lot with uh, radio telemetry data um, from radio collar animals. Um, we have uh, satellite collars, GPS collars. Um, we use uh, things called nano tags. We use this data to um, manage populations across the state and in different areas of the state. We use it to set hunting and trapping regulations. We also use it to look at, uh, to monitor population status. And as an example, we've been doing a, a project on lynx for about the past 20 years. We use that information to learn about uh, lynx home range size, um, how much their home ranges overlap, and that in turn gives us, can give us density estimates. Um, we also use it to look at um, lynx habitat use, um, habitat selection, um, and we also use it to um, track lynx distribution across the state.
My name is Jason Chapiga. I'm the GIS coordinator for the Maine Department of Animal and Fisheries and Wildlife. We collect data on vernal pools. They're a temporary habitat in the springtime after snowmelt. They're used primarily by amphibians, reptiles, and certain invertebrates. Uh, the data is collected by field biologists, uh, consultants working for developers, land trusts that are doing inventory on the property, uh, and some citizen scientists. We collect this data to make sure the state is in compliance with laws. Uh, it also helps to inform conservation decisions, uh, development, and it also helps to determines local species distribution.